further ado, let's get into the first question officially underway. Hey, Mike, wanted to get your thoughts on the Sheldon Keefe extension. It seems quite odd to extend the dude after just one playoff series win instead of wait and, wait and see the, the year play out. Also, what are the odds he survives the entire extension? So with Sheldon Keefe, I think we need to ask ourselves, first off, he might not be the great coach that is going to get the Leafs over the hump, but I do think he is being underrated. He is definitely not a bad coach. When you look at his record, he is one of the winningest coaches in NHL history, especially when you look at the Leafs. He's by far their most winning coach of all time ahead of Pat Quinn, any guy over 25 games. He has over a 9% higher points percentage ever. For those on audio, Sheldon Keefe has a 67.6 points percentage. Pat Quinn has a 59.1. Everybody else is below them. Mike Babcock, for reference, had a 55.7. So although... Don't get me wrong, the playoff success is definitely right now. Sheldon Keefe, as your coach, he's proven that if you give him talent, he can spit out a 108, 110-point team consistently, which, again, I know playoffs are what matter with the Toronto Maple Leafs. They're not trying to win the Atlantic Division. That's not their goals. But when you look at that, compare it to other teams in the league, think about, like, an Arizona Coyotes. That would be their Super Bowl to put up 108 points. So he gets you consistently to the dance. It's not really his fault that much that the players don't show up it is to a degree but it's not solely his fault and we look at him overall in terms of league history he actually has the highest points percentage by a head coach in NHL history and again that is pretty biased and again for those who are audio he has the 67.8 percent Rod Brindamore 66.1 Scotty Bowman 65.7 so you look at him He's, he's a very good regular season coach. You know with him in charge, you're going to be a pretty decent playoff team. But can he get you over the hump? No, as of right now, that is not the case. He has a 13-17 and 17 career uh, postseason winning percentage, 43.3%, 43 which is crazy because he's 1-5 in, in playoff series, but they always go to seven games. So he has that 13-17 and 17 record, which doesn't look that bad. So I think with Sheldon Keefe, looking at the contract, He's a fair coach. The other thing with this contract is it doesn't matter. The extension doesn't really matter. The extension happened just so they could get ahead of it, not have a lame duck head coach, because we've seen in the Toronto media, this is also why they just locked up Austin Matthews. It, it would be such a distraction having a lame duck head coach. Every single sports talk radio show, my personal favorite, Overdrive, they would nonstop be talking about, oh, is Sheldon Keefe going to say, oh, is Sheldon Keefe going to gonna get fired if they start out slow? Now that he has that extension, although, again, I'm going I'm to get into it, he could get fired at any point, but they just wanted that peace of mind so the media and the team is not nonstop nagging him. They're already probably going to head into the season with, with Nylander being an unrestricted free agent heading into next season, they don't also need the coach. So the two priorities, locking up Keefe, not priorities, but just locking up Keefe, getting that over with, and locking up Austin Matthews, they have done that. William Nylander, if he wants $10 million, you're just going to have to play the season without him. And looking at Sheldon Keefe's contract, this is, again, why it doesn't matter. You look at Mike Babcock. He signed an eight-year, $6.25 million contract with the Toronto Maple Leafs. He was, he was fired four and a half seasons into that. Three and a half years left on his deal. They were willing to pay that $6 million. You know how much Sheldon Keefe gets paid? Sheldon Keefe right now on his deal next year gets $1.95 million. Uh, we, we can maybe assume he got like a COVID inflation bump on that salary. He's getting paid, let's say, two point two five. Still, three years, which is what he has left for Sheldon Keefe, is basically the equivalent of one Mike Babcock year. So again, the, if the Leafs were able to swallow midseason firing Babcock with three and a half years left on his contract, they will easily fire Sheldon Keefe if he starts out slow this year, if the Maple Leafs lose in the first round. So it, it's really a non-issue. They just want to they just want to get rid of this off their plate, off this, off the media's off the media's back in terms of having those distractions. So that's why they mainly signed him to this extension. They will hap not happily fire him, but they will easily fire him. And another thing, when looking at this extension, Bradshaw Living got hired late. He was hired May 31st for the Toronto Maple Leafs. A lot of coaches, a lot of the top coaches were already hired by then, the teams that had vacancies. So he came in late. He was doing a full evaluation as the overall organization. So when it came to head coach, he looks, he says, oh, this guy consistently gets us easily in the playoffs like let's just let him play out the year 
maybe give him an extension, get the media off my back. He thought I might as well just give him another year, see what coach coaching candidates come up next year instead of getting the scraps, the, Jul- the June, July scraps in terms of coaching candidates for this summer. So in terms of Sheldon Keefe, it's really not that big of a deal. Again, they're going to they're gonna fire him if he doesn't perform. This is not saying that he's going to last the extension. In terms of odds of, of surviving the entire extension, he has three more years left. That's kind of fat. That is kind of fat. Three years. The average coach probably is on the job for three and a half years. Keefe's been on the job for four and a half years, I think, now. So is he going to have a seven-year run in Toronto? I would say there's like a 25% chance because maybe even 20. Because when you look at it, even if he makes the Eastern Conference Finals, saves his job next year, the pressure is still cup or bust the following year. Like if he makes the Eastern Conference Finals or even the Stanley Cup Finals and then they lose in the first round the next year, he could get fired. And then if they lose in the first round again, he could get fired. So this isn't just a two-year extension. There's a year built in. So this is the next three years. Even him winning the Stanley Cup, if they if they lost back-to-back first round, like I... Now, maybe not if they win the Stanley Cup, but still, he is not, he is still on the hot seat. He's one of the top coaches on the hot seat. So I, I don't think Sheldon Keefe is going to survive this extension. I would put it at around 20% because the players do like him. So that's kind of why they just gave him this extension overall. But moving on, good question from Aiden. 